Okay, um, so you guys might notice the cannon has changed a bit from the last one because what happened was I was going back and I was baking out a few maps so I could show a couple more things later. And this computer had an awesome seizure and crashed on me, so it <laughs> lost the other maps I had been done earlier. Um, so really it's all the same thing. It's just really just three fill layers. They all have this material. The wood has changed a bit because it's actually a material I had found on Substance Share. So before, if you remember, it was this, what was it? Uh, yeah, that American cherry. And um, it just looked really shiny, it didn't really look good at all. So I actually went back on my own time, made sure that I could find something a little closer to this. So what's cool is if you're working with Substance Painter, it comes with this awesome little symbol up here. It's called Substance Share website. Um, all you really gotta do is if you click on this, It'll open up a web tab, web page for you. Um, you will need to make an account, it's all free. And pretty much all this stuff you see here, uh, you get access to. So just imagine you have brushes, filters, shaders, and there's also smart materials, and there's just your standard materials. Um, it comes with a lot of cool stuff. Um, some of this stuff is just like what you see is what you get. Some of it's also procedural. Um, a word procedural means you can change this stuff to be like scale, like, what color it is, is it rusted, is it old, things like that. So I went through and I wanted to find something that would match better for the cannon itself instead of that shiny American cherry you would see on like new brand, like brand new floors. So I just typed in wood and it would come up with everything that would match the keyword wood. Or I could have just gone over here because I just forgot about two seconds ago and I could have gone down to wood. <laughs> and it gives you all these different types of wood uh, types you can use. So they have even ones that are stylized too, like a tree mystified. You can see what kind of differences you get uh, based on um, different uh, sliders that the guy made. So you can make it with like no mystified stuff or you can just make it completely clean and stylized, your call. Um, so from that, I went through, I found a wood material that I liked, which I'm not seeing right off the bat. So I'm just gonna grab something here called shiny wood. And you can just hit this download tab. And what that will basically do is it will give you a zip file. You can either just open it right away, drag and drop it in, or you can save it. I'm just going to open this right now to show you what comes with it. So most of these files should have SBSARs. And it's this green little icon. And you can use those in Painter. Um, cool thing is when you download it, let me go to my demo folder here. Do -do -do. Word, somebody there, somebody hit it. So I have a couple of them downloaded in my materials folder here. I have one called chainmail and one just wood board. So this is the one that I download that's currently on the Canon. And in Painter, you can literally just drag and drop it right in. So I'll see if I can do chainmail again or so. Oops, I didn't want to open it. It's going to open Substance Desire. Didn't mean to do that. Sorry. But you can just drag and drop it right in. And after I close Substance Designer down, which I'm surprised nothing crashed yet. I know. Um, it'll ask you, what do you want to add? Do you want to add a few more resources? You totally can. Find anything you want. Again, there's these other materials here. You can add images, pictures, whatever you need. It'll ask you to define what these are. So is it like a base material? So the wood that I'm bringing in is a material, so I'd throw it under that. Uh, procedural, that's more of a type of brush. You have texture, self-explanatory, you have alpha, so it's a black and white image that you can use on your brushes to stamp like details in and normals, filters and generators. So it's a base material. And I'm just gonna import it. You can import it just for like for now, or you can keep it in here forever in your shelf. So that way that this way it'll upload it to your actual program on your drive and you can access it in the future. Uh, so I just do current session, you'd import it, and it would be imported into the shelf that you would specify. So now that I have this material, I can go over to the actual layer that it's affecting. And you have the materials here that you can select from. So again, you can just go down to what we just imported, select it, and you're good to go. Or you could be really lazy and just double click on things and then it'll flip it out for you. Uh, so one other thing I'm really not liking is that this main support here is the grains are running like up and down. 
which you really wouldn't see. I mean, the wheel and all that, we can deal with that later, but let's deal with like this main detail first. So I'm gonna create a new fill layer and I'm gonna, I'm just gonna isolate just the main body. So let's add a black mask to hide everything. And let's, add, let's paint in the shell white that we want to affect. So either we can click it through the viewport. Again, to get to these uh, selectors, you can come up to this icon here for polygon fill. And it'll give you different ways you can select your object, either by vert, by face, or just the entire UV shell. So I can select the object here directly in the viewport, or I can select the shell directly in the 2D view. Uh, now that they are highlighted, I'm going to apply that material again on it. So I'll add the wood. And I'm having a feeling I might have to switch something out here in a minute, but let's actually turn the grains to try to match this better. So you have different the things you can do with your material is you can also scale it. So you can make it a lot smaller, a lot bigger, and you can also rotate it. Basically, it's just rotating the image inside that view. Uh, some of these normals are coming from the filter below. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the mask, I'm going to modify it with black, and I'm going to hide those two out. So now the normals are more properly matching the base and which way the, the direction should be really going. Okay, so now let's say this cannon is good to go. Uh, you guys got any questions real quick before we move on to the next stage? In terms of... No question, please. Okay. You good? Okay. So uh, moving on, let's take this object out. We can look at the channels that we've we've uh, made so far in Painter. So just by hitting the C key, we can go through the different channels that we have. So this is showing our metallic channel here. Um, everything that's black is not metal. Everything that is white is metal. Uh, you have your normal map, so we don't have any details on this object because it's just a straight low poly that we're supplying materials to. This is the actual object that's being affected, normals being affected from the materials that we applied to it. So those two maps are actually gonna to combine together when we go to export this out. And then you have your Oviedo base color. So yeah, again, these are opaque because I didn't have anything put on them. And then your height map, which we're really not gonna to use too much, and then your rougher snow. Uh, so let's go into our export settings. I'm gonna modify a few things so I can actually like export this correctly. So you can just right click export textures, and I want my configuration to come down to Unreal Engine 4, packed, and this is the type of channels it'll give us. Our base, occlusion, roughness, metallic, normal, and emissive. So again, we can select where we want these to go. I'm just gonna save over what I had done earlier. So let's go to the this demo, let's go to bakes. And I'm just going to let me make let me get rid of the old the ones that were in there already existing, so that way I'm not having like doubles of everything here. Yes. Okay. Do you need Targa or PNG? Uh, I can use Targa. That's fine. Let me go ahead and I'll do that right now. <laughs> so again, you saw how fast that baked out. It's not a problem. Yeah, I can reset. There's something weird going on. But yeah, I tend to stick with Targas. Thank you for catching me on that, by the way. No We're all human. We all make mistakes. Unless you're just weird and you never make the mistakes. <laughs> so, Targa. And we'll export that out again. So all of our stuff is baked, and here's our three channels. Now we can take this model into Unreal. I'm going to skip the designer process, but um, you're going to see probably a couple issues come up when we move to Unreal. So in that time, I'm going to go ahead and I'll try it while Unreal is opening and doesn't crash on me, I hope. Also, most importantly, let's save. So when you save this, these Substance Painter files out, it's going to save them as SPP files. Um, so this keeps changing on me. not really going to be able to access your file from other programs except Painter, really. Um, you might be able to pull in some of this data to Designer, so it really depends. Not a mind. So next time you open it, you should have all these, all this set up to what you had left it as before. Nope. And let's see if we can open it. Ah, you know what? I could do a brand new file. It's all, should be fine. So let's see. 
Can you launch it from that yellow button on the top left? It'll just open. This is going to update it. I don't want to update it. No, no, oh, no, gotcha. Right My bad. It's been forever since I ever touched that button. <laughs> So I'm gonna launch the I'm gonna launch a new project. I'm just gonna have the third person template so I can run around. Actually, I'll do first person so I can just like just fly around the object and actually really look at it. Uh, so let me let's take a look at the okay. Interesting. <laughs> Gotta love it. Gotta love those crashes, man. <laughs> okay. Let's see if I can actually get those files open in Painter, and I'll kind of show you how they are set up in Painter, or set up in Photoshop, and how Photoshop's going to look at it. So let's see. Open with, and I'm just going to open it with Adobe Photoshop. Again, in Painter, you also have the option to export all your stuff directly to Painter. I haven't done that yet, so I was just going to stick with doing this the old-fashioned way for right now. You can tell some of the RAM is starting to go away because like <laughs> it's taking forever for stuff to open. All right, new project, and I'm just gonna go to first person blueprint because I can't code. I only do visual stuff. <laughs> I feel like an outcast whenever I have to talk to other coders. It's horrible. All right, so this is our albedo channel, our base color that came in. Uh, there's really no details on this because we didn't use any generators. We didn't really paint nothing on it. We just applied the straight uh, materials on it to let the materials do the talking for us. And we have our normal and we have our ambient occlusion. So let me drag and drop these in. There's a version of Photoshop I got. I can't even drag and drop anymore. So it's kind of nice to be able to do that on this. So we got Unreal opening a new project for us, and let's see what are we doing on time here. Are you done with subjects? You should probably close it if you're able to save the round. Yeah, um, checking what time we're at right now on this. Can't teach it. Oh, it's got ten. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna cut this one off, and I'll start a new one.